Welcome back, week 19. We are continuing on our study of earth science. Our verse, um, Psalms 24, 1 says, The earth is the Lord's and all the fullness thereof. Everything that's in the Lord uh, in the earth is from the Lord for the Lord's glory. And we'll see that even today um, as we study crystals, which is going to be super fun. All right, so first of all, your question, what are crystals? Who can give me some examples of crystals? Um, and the definition of crystals is that they, actually, let me tell you specifically, minerals whose atoms are arranged in a highly organized repeating pattern. So we know we have already talked about minerals to some extent. We're going to talk in a lot more detail in a couple weeks. Um, but minerals are chemicals found in the ground. Um, minerals are used in our bodies. They're used to make things. Um, so they're all in our world. Minerals to, to come together to form rocks. Well, when gemologists study different rocks and minerals, when minerals come together in a highly organized geometric pattern down to the atomic level, not just on the face level, but on the atomic level, then they are called crystals. So as I was just even reading and thinking about it, it just made me think of a verse in 1 Corinthians where it talks about the Lord. Um, God is not a God of confusion. He is a God of order and of peace. And we see that in the beauty of crystals. They're very unique and that to their atomic level, they have the same repeating pattern. And that's what makes them so beautiful and the cool shapes that, um, that they do. So today we're going to learn how crystals form and we're going to make our own um, kind of model of crystals. All right, so this um, experiment takes about 10 minutes to dry. So right now then, so you're just gonna give them a little bit of background on what they are. Um, and then we're gonna do some teaching a little bit more here in a second. All right, so our materials are our handy dandy measuring cups. Um, go ahead and put half a cup of hot tap water. We're just using our tap water because that's what we have available. Um, so just run the tap water, get as hot as possible, put half a cup in your measuring cup. Then we're gonna have a third a cup of Epsom salts. Um, my tutors, it'll already be measured out in a little plastic baggie for you. So it's a third of a cup of good old Epsom salts, which are crystals um, made of magnesium sulfate is our mineral there. Something to stir with, um, dish soap, and a rag. Okay, so you start with your half cup of hot water. You're just going to pour the Epsom salt in there and stir. And our goal here is to make a super saturated solution. So that means the hot water, the molecules are bouncing around really fast because it's hot. And as they're bouncing around really fast, it allows the water to absorb dissolved magnesium molecules. And so the hotter your water is, so if you have somewhere where you can boil water, the hotter the water, the more it will actually um, absorb and uh, the more it will do. Our solution becomes kind of cloudy, and that means it's super saturated, which means it is beyond its capacity. So my warm water can no longer um, absorb any more dissolved magnesium. Um, and so that is as good as it's going to get, which is pretty good. It really takes most of that, a third of it in that half a cup. So we make a super saturated solution, okay? We put one to two drops of soap. And if you're like me, you want to know why everything. And so the purpose of the soap is really just because it helps it to adhere to the window better and helps with cleanup. But I actually forgot to do it one time and it really did not adhere nearly as beautiful. So that just helps it to adhere. And that's a whole nother experiment on soap and water molecules but it does help. So one to two drops of your dish soap are all you need. You can use food coloring if you want to make them colored. Um, because we're at the church and using their space, we're just keeping it nice and clear, which works just fine. All right, then you're just going to simply dip your rag 
in there. You don't want it sopping wet, um, but you do just want it enough. And literally all you're gonna do is wipe this onto the window. Do, do, do. Just like that. Just a little space. Okay. And then you can now have, it takes about 10 minutes for that to dry. And so now is your teaching time. So what we, our goal here is to kind of correlate what happens in the earth to what's happening in our experiment, how crystals are actually formed. You can ask kids, does anybody know how crystals are formed? Has anybody learned that before? Um, we have some examples of crystals, salt, sugar, snowflakes, diamonds. Um, how do you think those are formed? We know from our definition that the minerals, the atoms of the minerals are highly organized. They come together in this beautiful repeating pattern well, what do you think makes that happen? Why are not all rocks crystals? Um, why doesn't it happen everywhere? Um, why aren't crystals hanging from trees? So see if they have any hypotheses on what's happening. So what happens to form crystals is you need a couple key things. You need the ingredients, which are minerals. You need heat or temperature, usually a very, very high temperature. And you need high pressure. You also obviously need a space for the crystal to grow and you need time. It just takes time. So, but the main thing is ingredients, um, which are minerals in the ground and in our experiment. You need um, heat or temperature, high temperature and high pressure, okay? So we have talked about, what are, who can tell me the parts of the geosphere? You got it, core mantle crust, hydrosphere, biosphere, atmosphere. And so we know from our lava experiment and from the stretching of the rocks experiment that there's the mantle full of magma and then there's the crust floating kind of on top of that. We know the plates of the crust move and create various structures. Um, in that lava experiment, we also talked about how there are little breaks in the crust, little fissures, cracks, and this is where the magma can kind of sneak up from the mantle and the magma can be pushed up into those little cracks. So first of all, the magma, what is magma? It is melted rock, right? Hot melted rock. Well, what are rocks made out of? Minerals. And so melted minerals floating all around. Just like in our solution here, the water is our hot liquid, our hot solution, and we dissolved, melted, our mineral, our specific ones, magnesium sulfate, into our warm liquid, much like minerals are full in the magma, the melted rock. The hotter a liquid is, the more dense you can make it, um, because more molecules can be absorbed into a hot liquid. So magma, if you can picture it full of packed, melted rock, melted minerals, all in there, okay? So here is our, like magma, liquid with dissolved minerals. The next thing that happens is the heat. That was, we got that, and that's in the magma. And then we have the cracks, okay, in the crust where the magma comes up. This is where the pressure takes place in real life. And so the pressure from around that magma will shape, form, and squish together those minerals as they cool. So now we have hot temperature, now going to a cooler temperature. Much like on our window, we had a hot, warm liquid um, which is now cooling off. Well, what do you know happens to water when it goes from a hot um, space to a cool space as it cools off? So, or what happens to water when it um, changes from a liquid to a gas? It evaporates, it goes, goes away into a gas form. So, much like the magma in the crust, is cooling, so is our liquid cooling on the glass. 
as it cools, the water is evaporating and the magnesium sulfate minerals are forced out. They're no longer stuck in with the water molecules. The water molecules are going away, they're evaporating and the magnesium is forced out and they join together in a specific pattern to form a crystal. In the Earth's crust, the magma, as it cools and hardens, the minerals are squished together, joined together and bond in a beautiful crystalline fashion, geometric shape, and that is what makes crystals. So sometimes you can see layers where, you know, there was one type of um, crystal or formed of a certain type of mineral. Below that, there may be another type of mineral and you can see where it's cooled, hot, cooled, hot. Sometimes those fissures or cracks will be closed up and then they'll open back up again, closed up and open back up again. And sometimes gemologists can even tell that change as over time that crystal is formed. Um, so it's pretty cool. So that is kind of how we're mimicking. So you kind of want to show what's happening in real life to how we are trying to mimic it here in our experiment. After about 10, 15 minutes, talk about it, show them some pictures, and then I want to show you um, kind of what happens over time. Hopefully this is clear enough that you can see it. So it actually forms this thin layer of beautiful crystals on the window and you can tell they're in um, really cool shapes I'm sorry um, and so we have basically created a thin layer of crystals on our window um, so again our God is not a God of confusion but of order and peace just like crystals form in a perfect matching pattern um, that clear down to their atomic level that makes them unique and special.